And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. So I get Role Player in the mail, and the first thing I did was roll my eyes at the name. Ha 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 ha, Role Player. I actually expected the guy to be sitting there eating a big cinnamon roll. But it's very generic fantasy artwork, and then I looked at the back of the box, and it's like, oh, it's about, it's a meta game, kind of, where you are playing as you build a character. I was like, eh, okay. So I took it with me to one of my game meetups and some people played it and they came to me and said, Tom, this game's really fun. Let's play it again. And I said, all right. So I jumped in uh, and I made fun of the name to everybody and everyone said, no, no, the name makes sense. I'm like, all right, well, let's take a look. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to pick what race you want to be. So you can be orcs, you can be humans, you can be halflings, you can be the elf, you can be a dwarf, or you can be a dragonkin. And each of these shows a male character on one side and a female on the other. So you might want to be the male dwarf or the female dwarf. It's up to you. Um, you also are going to pick your class. So there's different cards here. Cleric, warrior, bard, thief, druid, sorcerer, or... Wizard, Ranger, Rogue, Monk, Barbarian, and Paladin. So you're going to pick a class, so you're either going to be a Cleric or a Paladin. You're going to be a Wizard or a Sorcerer. And whichever one you take, these are the stats you're going to be going for. It also shows you what color you're going to be. So let's say I want to be the Cleric here. So the Cleric has a special ability, a Charitable. Once per round, I can pay two gold to take a Wisdom Attribute action. So I'd put this here, and I'd also put a white cube on it to show that I'm the white player. Now those are things you pick. The random things, you're going to get a random alignment. So there's a whole pile of alignment cards, Scoundrel, Maniac, Guardian, Rebel, Free Spirit, Lunatic, etc. So let's draw one here randomly. I am a Guardian. So I'm going to try to be good and it's halfway between lawful and chaotic. So neutral good. So I'm going to put the Guardian here. And then you're going to get a backstory. There's all sorts of backstories. Lost Soul, Aristocrat, etc. So my backstory is devoted. My only son has been stricken with a grave illness. I've set out within the intent of doing everything in my power to save the life of my boy. All right, so you're going to put that here. So this is pretty much almost all the setup. Then you're going to draw dice depending on the number of players. So let's say I'm playing a four-player game. You're going to draw eight dice randomly from a bag of dice. And so here I'll draw the, the dice here, and then I will roll these dice. And then you're going to put these dice in the different slots here, You starting with the left-hand side. So for example... I could do this if I wanted to, but I probably wouldn't want to do that. I'm trying to look at the scores here. I want to get a high wisdom, so maybe I need an 18 of wisdom, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll do this. Hmm. Something like this. For each yellow dice, I get two extra gold to start the game with. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get different dice in different positions. Maybe I'll do this. Now, what you're trying to do is get the most points. So that's the way we should talk about getting points. At the end of the game, you're going to look at each of the stats, adding together the pips on all the dice, and you're going to have three dice in each category. If those stats equal those, like for example, if my strength is 14 or 15, I'm going to get two points. If my intelligence is 14 or higher, I'll get one. If my wisdom is 18 exactly, I'll get four points. You're also going to look here and see, do I have the dice of those colors in those positions? So see, for example, this blue die is in the right position for this one. So my blue die, so I want to try to match as many of those if I can. If I match all six, I'll get six points. If I match just two or three of them, I'm only going to get one point. Also, on your alignment, you're going to place uh, a cube of your color in the middle, and this is going to move around, and if you can have it end up on different things. So if I end... Here on the good neutral, I'm going to get three points at the end of the game. If I land anywhere in the bottom evil section, I'm going to lose a point. So that's going to get you points. You're also going to get points for each die that matches your own color. So I would need some white dice. I don't have any of those yet, but each white die that I get in my thing will get me points. And there's also some cards that are going to get you points. So each round of the game, players are going to be drafting dice, and then they're going to be buying equipment. 
So you're going to put out cards, one more than a number of players. So let's say we're playing with five players. So I put out one, two, three, four, and five here in, in front of everybody. And then on two through four, every card, everyone except for the last one will put a coin. Then the, whoever's the first player is going to draw five dice from the bag, and they're going to roll those dice. And they're going to put those dice in order. If there is two dice the same, the start player can pick which one goes where. So maybe he picks this. Now, starting with the first player, each person is going to draft the die. When you draft the die, if there's a coin there, you get that coin. You also take the card, because that card is going to determine your pick for when buying items. When you take that die, you're going to put that die somewhere on your board. Now, depending where you put it, you're going to get a special ability. So if you put it in the strength row, you can take one of your dice and flip it to the other side. If you put it in the dexterity row, you can switch two dice in two different spots if you want to. If you put it in the constitution row, you can add one or subtract one from a die. If you put it in the intelligence row, you can re-roll a die. If you put it in the wisdom row, you can move one space in any direction on the alignment. And if you put it in a charisma row, you'll take a charisma token, and this, this turn will let you, if you use it this turn, you'll get one less uh, discount when you buy cards from the equipment row. So everyone's going to take one of these cards and get a die, and you're going to keep doing that. Then you'll go over to the market. Again, the market's going to have one more card than the number of players, so I'm going to stick them here like this so you can see them. Each card has a cost on it. And the cards are of different types, and they're going to do different things. Some cards are equipment. Equipment's probably going to give you bonuses, like this is Chain Helm. This is going to give you points for as many of the different chains that I have at the end of the game. If I have all five pieces, I'll get ten points. And if I'm the red or the white class, which I am the white class, so this I'll get an extra point. So that's this one might be worth taking. It's only one point. Well, plus I'm a white class, so that's two points. And it costs three. I can also take a skill. This skill here is Cure Wounds where I can increase the face value of one die of my class color, my character sheet, by one. Now, you'll notice this shows up here on it. When you use a skill, you're going to tap it, and you can only untap one skill per round, and you can untap them, but whenever you use a skill, you have to move your alignment cube in a direction on that skill. So that, for example, this Cure Wounds says go up one. Well, now I can't use Cure Wounds again, unless somehow I manage to move this down one so I can move it back up again to utilize Cure Wounds. Uh, acrobatics here is the same thing going up, but they'll be in different directions. Some cards are traits. These are just going to be extra points at the end of the game. This gives you one point for every skill card you have. This gives you two points if your strength or constitution uh, attribute is eight or less at the end of the game. And there's all sorts. The deck is actually split into lower level equipment and higher level equipment that are shuffled and put on top of each other. So you can see here there's different sets of armors for different characters. Here I can get two points for a weapon card at the end of the game. This counts as an armor card of any set. This card, this proud card is just simply straight points at the end of the game. There's more pieces of the chain set. Here I can get a, a point for every two gold dice on my character sheet. And so all sorts of different cards and you're going to be getting these. So as the game progresses, each round of the game, you will simply be adding another die. You'll be drafting one for the middle and getting another card in the middle. You can refuse a card in the middle. And take two gold, That especially if you are running out of money, you can do that. You just pick one and discard it. But you're slowly building these up. And at the end of the game, like I said, you're going to add these scores, plus any bonuses from this card, plus any bonuses from this card, plus bonuses for each die that matches your color. As you can see, I'm not doing well. Let's pretend I got that one. Yay, an extra point. Plus any points for your armor and things like that. Most points is the winner of the game. Coming around on the name, still, I don't know what it is. It just makes me roll my eyes every time I hear it. Ha ha, roll my eyes. The artwork in this game is okay. The dice are decent quality. The components are okay. But the game is good. It's really good. I was really surprised by this. Okay, I, maybe, maybe you need the background uh, for this for some people, but many of us who played our role-playing games have played mostly Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder where you're rolling the dice to get your stats, and you roll three dice, and eventually you could roll four dice and subtract one, and then you could add points from one and up points in another skill, and so, and then you could, if you didn't like your character stats, throw it away, re-roll again, and then once you roll, maybe you can pick which dice go to which stat. There's all different ways to roll up the characters, but it was almost always three six-sided dice, right? 
And then you had your alignment and you had made up your backstory and your weapons. And so as you're playing this, you get kind of nostalgia for that. You're like, what? yeah, what? this is kind of like growing up a player. And you're playing a game about making a character. You're trying to munchkin your character out, making your character have amazing stats. I mean, an 18 in the stat, that's pretty good. An 18 in one, an 18 in another, that's exceptionally good. And this game is like, hey, try to manipulate your stats to make sense here, to match the cleric, to match the magician, to match the, the barbarian. And I really find that intriguing. The game has some really good mechanisms. You have the drafting phase, okay? Do I want to take the dice are from lowest to highest, so I want, I want to take the, the, low, the low die. Why? Because they have the first crack to buy those cards. Those cards can be really useful. Or I might want to take the high dice, because high dice in this game are almost always better. Low dice are useful sometimes, or maybe a one can be useful because you can flip it. But the color of the dice matters too. The yellow dice, every time you take one of those, you get two gold. Anytime you put a die in the third spot in a column, you get a gold. So you think about that. So I'm thinking about the color. I need that color so to match my card, my backstory card. But I want that color because it matches my character class. And I want that die because the number on it is the number I need. Or I want that die because I want that position when going. These are a lot of choices for just drafting the dice. And I like that a lot. Then when you take the die, where do you put it? That's another choice. And you could put it in one row because that's the number and color that row needs. Or you might put it in a row just to activate the power of that row. Really interesting stuff. And really kind of a thinky, puzzly game at that point. Then it's time to buy the stuff. Do I want to buy this now? Do I buy this ability? Should I use this ability? How am I manipulating that little alignment grid? Because I want to end up with the, in the spots worth points at the end of the game. But at the same time, if I move it down, I can use this special ability. So there's a lot of different thought choices going on here. And the thought choices don't change much as the game goes by. I mean, it doesn't, what I mean is there's not more of them and there's not fewer of them. They're about the same each time. And going first is exciting because you can pick any die you want. But you always have a choice between at least two dice. And then even then you might get a die and then where you put it, you have a lot of choices until the end. You got to stick it in that last slot. Scores in this game are often close. But again, like I said, it's a very puzzly style game. So you're trying to do as many things as you can. You want to get your skills to be the right numbers. You want to make your alignment, I mean, your backstory match. You want to get your alignment in the right spot. You want to have as many dice of your color as you possibly can. You want to buy sets of weapons and equipment. So all that works really well. There's a solitaire version. I've not played that, but I can imagine that this game, you know, just trying to get the highest possible score. Not a ton of interaction with other players. Really, the only interaction is grabbing things that they want and that, that, that basically drafting the cards in the middle and or buying weapons that other people want. Although that certainly keeps you on your toes. But the nice thing is when you take a die and you start doing it, the next person can go as you decide where to put the die. So that keeps things moving. The only minor problem I might have found is that the different sets of weapon armor, there's one for white red, there's one for purple green, there's one for blue, uh, purple, I think, or I forget the different combinations. If you're playing with a certain number of players and I pick the white character and you pick the red one, and let's say we're playing a three-player game and someone else picks the blue one, the blue player has no competition for his armor while you and I are going for the same armor group. So to me, I think that that's fixable. If you're playing with a three-player game, make sure each person picks one of the three different two-color groups. If you're playing with four, you're going to probably have two people who are fighting over the same armor, which, again, isn't the end of the world because you can go for other things. But I did notice that in the game. I wish there was maybe a way around that. Other than that, I was very impressed. The game does not look impressive, although a lot of dice is never a bad thing. The name didn't make me jump up and get it, but I'll tell you, playing it... I gotta give this points for a really unique, interesting theme about building a character. Following that theme and making sense. Bringing that nostalgia back, but at the same time also having really good, excellent, thought-provoking decisions. Uh, one guy I played it with was like, oh, this, is not, this is not a hack and slash. Yeah, you're right. It's the pre-hack and slash, and it's very puzzly. People, this is a game where you are encouraged to do the min-maxing of your character at the beginning. People who, who like doing that are going to love this. But even if you don't like fantasy role-playing games, let's say, I don't care about any of that backstory, you still might enjoy this game because it's kind of a mathematical puzzle. Not so that the whole game is silent, but the whole time I was sitting there thinking, all the time, yeah, there's some luck, you know, I roll the die, yeah, I got the die and I need it, or, oh, uh, I needed a white die and there was none more left in the bag. But the decisions in the game are good enough that I would be eager to try this one more often. Enjoy all my plays so far. 
That's role player. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.